Dear Mary, Here is all that need be said about my experience gambling in Atlantic City. At the Trump Taj Mahal, I played one to three dollars, seven card stud for four hours, sipping free whiskey and making jokes with strangers, and I lost all of seven dollars. Then I played slots and lost seven times that in a quick, mean, and lonely 40 minutes. As they say, easy come, easy go. It's tempting to use gambling as a metaphor when writing about the Jersey Shore, but I would rather discuss the metaphoric power of the slingshot, which stands at 8th and Boardwalk, a handful of miles south of the Taj in Ocean City, New Jersey. Like all good metaphors, the slingshot is versatile and may be seen from many different angles. It is seen first, and from afar, as two enormous towers lit with neon, a hundred feet high above the boardwalk and the ocean beyond. As you get closer, you see that between them is suspended a spherical cage that rotates freely around its horizontal axis, where cables stretch from either side to the tips of the two towers. There are two seats inside the sphere that, after a hydraulic mechanism tightens the cables, carry two occupants 200 feet into the air at 100 miles per hour, while spinning. It is the sort of thing that its creators bill as a ride. It is the sort of thing that, when seen from the ground at the very base of the towers, inspires one 14-year-old girl with very large teeth to somberly explain to her girlfriend, I'm not saying that you're going to die. I'm just saying that if you do die, it was meant to be. The summer before this one, we were fearless. In 1999, Catherine and I came to Ocean City for an engagement party that my mother and her five sisters threw for us on the deck of my Aunt Susan's summer home. We opened presents until dusk fell. Then Catherine and I hiked down to the main drag of the boardwalk and took on everything the amusement parks had to offer. The giant Ferris wheel, the inverter, the city jet, the Spanish galleon, Catherine's favorite. We were thrown and twisted and twirled, and Catherine almost got sick but didn't. My grandmother was alive then, and so was my mother. Several weeks after we left, there was an accident on a new roller coaster at Wonderland Pier, the Wild Wonder. One car slammed into another at high speed, and two occupants, a young woman from New York and her very young child, were thrown from their restraints. They flew out of the car, through the air, and into a steel support beam. They died instantly. As well, as you may recall from my last letter, my grandmother died the following Christmas, and my mother died the following June, six days after my birthday, both quickly, both with little warning. And then in August, we returned to Ocean City. People asked, will it be hard going back without your mother? And I had no answer, the same non-answer I had not have to any question about how hard it is or will be now that all these things have happened. Jesus, I don't know. Let's go to the boardwalk. When we got to Wonderland Pier, no one seemed to feel the chill haunt of the roller coaster deaths but us. I watched the children in the little cars fly into the air and I cringed. I watched the teenagers necking on the giant Ferris wheel with its rust spots and strange creakings. Just looking at the double dip at Playland made my neck hurt. But it was the slingshot that sent us packing. The Slingshot is not affiliated with either Wonderland or Playland. The Slingshot stands alone. Couple after couple are sent screaming into the black summer night, becoming a tiny star-like spark against the sky, cables heaving, towers wobbling, sphere becoming invisible. It was the Slingshot that made us feel too old, too scared, and suddenly vulnerable. Catherine has said that when she was a child, she loved all amusement park rides because she knew that they were made by grown-ups which to her meant endless safety and boundless security. Naturally, we have outgrown that delusion. As we trudged back from the boardwalk in defeat, we saw the moon over the beach, or at least we thought it was the moon. It hovered just above the inky horizon, blood red, engorged, larger than the sun at dawn, too bloated to hoist itself any further in the sky and more likely about to fall. A small crowd had actually gathered by the boardwalk's rail to gawk at it, as though it were a fleet of invading spaceships, and Catherine and I joined them. Either that's the moon, someone behind us said, or something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. So now it's the next night, 
the night after the moon, and Catherine and I have returned to the slingshot. The large-toothed girl behind us in line says her piece about death and destiny, and we clutch our non-refundable tickets with panic and regret. We watch that spherical cage ascend and descend for nearly 45 minutes. We watch children no older than 10 be happily loaded into what we come to call the ascending sphere of death. And then we're next. It is difficult to explain what has drawn us here after our cowardly retreat last night. We have every excuse not to be here, from the metaphysical to the financial. It costs 20 bucks a head to fly. This alone should chase off a cheapskate like me. But we're here at Catherine's impulsive suggestion and my impulsive agreement, and neither one of us wants to back down. We want to be able to say we will not be cowed by death. But we also see very clearly the weak links in the slingshot chain, the points where the cable may break or the tower may buckle. The whole rig is set back from the boardwalk in the semi-dark of 8th Street. Though enormous, it has the look of something that really shouldn't be there, of something that can be broken down and carted away very quickly, should the sheriff show up wanting to know what's all this about a slingshot then. There is a palpable air of unease around us, as though all of us in line can perhaps too easily envision something snapping this time, the ball flying up and disappearing into the night, crashing miles away, in the ocean perhaps, or a parking lot, and if not this time, the next time. I do not tell Catherine this, and really haven't considered it until now, but we are there too, I think, not just to defy death, but to welcome it. It has been a hard year. It has been an unfair year in which we have been taught to think of the unthinkable, taught that we are not exempt from tragedy, but in fact can be its strange attractors. It's not quite a suicide pact, but I think that we share an agreement, unspoken even to ourselves, that if this thing kills us, we could live with that, so to speak. When our turn comes, there's a strange ritual to it. We empty our pockets into a plastic bin. Wallets, change, keys, saltwater taffy, Catherine's flip-flops. I take my glasses off and give them to the man who will prepare us for the ride. I swear he has a handlebar mustache. He tells us we can take nothing with us. We sit in the cage. The mustachioed man arranges the nylon straps and restraining bars that hold us in place. One of them goes directly across my crotch but I am not embarrassed to have him help me there. I am beyond such modesties. Tighter, I say. He closes the cage and gives it a friendly tap. It'll be over before you know it, he says. The cage tilts back and is locked into a release switch below. We are facing directly upwards now. There are no stars. They are blotted out by the lights of the boardwalk. The towers hum as the cables tighten. I take Catherine's hand. Pretend we are going into space, I say. That is not a comfort, she says. The hum grows very loud. The cables grow very tight. Catherine takes her hand back. She wants to hold the restraint. A switch somewhere is thrown, and we go up. As metaphors for life and death on the boardwalk go, gambling in Atlantic City is pretty promising. But the slingshot is better for two reasons. One, Though it is unlikely, it may actually kill you. And two, it reminds you that when you are close to death and intimate with it, when you are spinning fast and high in the dark night with nothing around you, it is difficult to tell what is happening. It is difficult to be afraid. Far more difficult than it is on the ground. <laughs> 